<laughs> oh man, relax, relax. It's gonna be all right. So 12 tests of love, each of these tests is designed to help you discern and distinguish between love and infatuation. How do you know? You don't know till you give a test and then get back the results. Then evaluate those results based on criteria. Now, the criteria that we're using to measure the, the information we get back from getting this test is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That's what we're basing the test results on. If they don't measure up to those criteria, then, you know, this, this, this is infatuation, not love. You with me here? Yeah. All right. Test number one is the test of time. Test of time. Love benefits and grows through time. Whereas infatuation grows old and gets stale and diminishes with time. What do you mean? You know, some people meet each other. They kiss. I mean, man, they all over each other. They just can't. They just can't be. They're inseparable. When they're not together, they talking to each other. All the time. That's infatuation. They have, been, they have been wooed. They have been overcome by their emotions, by the physical attraction of this person. You look at them and you get lightheaded. That's not love. That's infatuation. You can't wait to the next opportunity to get in that person's presence so you can feel that lightheadedness again. You talk to your girlfriends and you say things like, girl, let me tell you, when the man's around, I just, oh my God. It's not love, that's infatuation. Woo, son, I tell you. It's not love, that's infatuation. You see? Listen to this. You fall into lust but you grow into love. You fall into lust. Now remember, lust is insatiable. Love is, lust is never satisfied. So if you're in a relationship that you think is love, but reality is, it's, 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 uh, it's infatuation, then you're constantly trying to satisfy somebody that can never be satisfied. In other words, you're trying to recreate the fantasy feelings that you experienced when you first met them. That only happens one time. And the longer you're around this person and the more reality sets in, the less infatuated you are with them. Are you listening? See, all the, little, all the little stuff couples do when they first meet, just give them a little time. Let the time test do its thing. You know that staying up all night talking on the phone? Well, you can do that till you got bills to pay. <laughs> Somebody got to go to work. <laughs> you be calling me, you know, talking no two or three o'clock in the morning. I got to be up at five on the job at eight. Come on now. That ain't cute no more. <laughs> but, but you do all those things in infatuation. Hello? The time test. We grow in love. You can see people that's been married, been around each other for a long time. They've taken on the characteristics and attributes of one another. They can even tell what the other person thinking sometimes. That's what love does. 
Now, the only reason that happens and the benefit of that is sometimes there are things you need that you don't know how to express, but the person that really loves you, since they have sensitized themselves to your needs, they sense what you need before you ask. And isn't that the best reward to have somebody meet your need before you ask? Oh, I was just about, I know, honey, here it is. <laughs> that happens in relationships that grow in love. The test of knowledge. God said, my people perish or are destroyed because of a what? Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. People, people of God are still, their, their emotions their relational life is being destroyed because of what they don't know. You're getting involved. I mean, here's, here's the process for some people. They meet one day, three days later, they're engaged. A month later, they're married. Or, you know, today, they just shacking. They moved in together. Months after they've known, after they met the person, not known the person, met the person. You know, some of y'all, you know, you, you meet them in the morning, you in bed with them that night. Hmm. Test of knowledge. Love grows out of an appraisal of all the known characteristics of the other person. In other words, the more you know about a person, about the characteristic, good qualities of that person, that's what causes your love for them, real love, to grow. Are you listening to me? Love grows out of an appraisal of all the known characteristics of the other person. So if you don't know nothing about them, how love gonna grow? And if what you think you know is full of lies and fantasies, then when you discover the truth, <laughs> now you're hurt. You know, a lot of relationships, you know, you talk to people in counseling and things, they have all these cliches about how they feel and what they know about the other person. You say, well, how do you feel about John? Well, he completes me. <laughs> That's a cliche. What does that mean? He completes me. Well, well, you know, there was a part of your body missing, and when you met him, he added it. What does that mean? You don't know what that means. That, that's just some, that's a fantasy world. That's, that's wishful thinking. That's Hollywood. This is my soulmate. What? How's it going to be? You just met him two weeks ago. How does your soul mate? Soul ties. <laughs> Demonic infusion. That's what it is. <laughs> it's my soul mate. <laughs> so the test of knowledge. What do you know? You know when you, before you marry this person, before you get involved with this person, you need to know something. You need to know about their family. You need to know about, you know, you need to know about the crazy folks in their family. <laughs> you know, you, you, need to, you need to know about that crazy uncle they trying to hide from you. <laughs> you know, if crazy in the family, I want to know. You know, you're going to have you have children one day. Amen? Amen. Don't you want to know? <laughs> they be hiding them kind of folks. Well, we on our way over to the house. Oh, no, don't come today. <laughs> Uncle Johnny over here, you understand? Well, I can't say Uncle Johnny. I got Uncle Johnny. He ain't crazy. <laughs> Uncle Leroy over here, you know. <laughs> come, come next week. You need to know. What are their friends like? Their associates, the people they hang out with. What are these people thinking? Do they have any goals, any dreams, any aspirations? What, 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 what are they like? Do you know them? Now, here's, here's some things I want to give you to help you to get to know them. Order a credit report. <laughs> oh, I ain't playing. 
order a credit report. If you are seriously considering connecting with this person in marriage, you need a credit report. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to reveal a lot of truth. <laughs> yeah. First of all, it's going to show you, do they keep covenants? If they're not paying their bills, that means they got bankruptcies. That means they don't honor covenants. And I want you to tell me how you're going to convince yourself that if this man won't keep a covenant with Sears concerning a wash and a dryer, how in the world he going to keep a covenant of marriage to you to take care of you for the rest of your life? So all a contract is is a covenant. All marriage is is a covenant. So you get that credit report. And you're going to discover some other things. What has he really set his affections on? Because the Bible says, where a man treasure is, there will his heart be also. So I look at that credit report and I see where he's been spending his money. I know where his heart is. Or her heart, for that matter. Amen? I remember one time, you know, and this, this happened. This is a true story. This guy had met this young lady. We were in pre-marriage counseling, and, you know, I said, How, have you been married before? He said, yes, I once before. The credit report told the truth. This was his fourth marriage that he was going to be entering into. How do we know? Because he had child support judgments on the credit report for three previous marriages. Now, the deception was she worked, they worked in the same place. And, and so she thought he made, well, he did make as much money, if not more, than she did based on the position he had at the same company. But what she didn't know is them other three women and them children were getting a whole big chunk of that money. And that was one of the reasons he wanted to marry her. He needed support. <laughs> He was mad. Joker got straight mad when I said order a credit report. I'm like, what are you mad about? People don't get upset about revealing truth. They get upset when they're trying to hide the lie. And you're about to expose them. Hallelujah. <laughs> Knowledge. You want to get a credit report. Yeah, just say, hey, man, you bring your credit report by. <laughs> Can I take you out to dinner? Yeah. Bring your credit report to it. You. We'll, we'll discuss it over lunch <laughs> to see if we need to go any further. Oh, y'all think y'all laugh. That ain't funny. I mean, if I, was, if I was out there, that's what I'd be doing. And the next thing you need, we get knowledge, right? Second test is what? Test of knowledge. You need a blood test. Mm-hmm. See, back, back, back a long time ago, you couldn't, and I'm talking a long time ago, 30 years, 30, 30 years ago, maybe 35 years ago, you couldn't, you couldn't get married unless you got a blood test. But since, since uh, they've, and I, and, I, and I say this with, with, with you know, look, let me just say it. Because, because they want to hide the true numbers of the impact on AIDS in our culture, they, they, they don't release numbers like they used to. And, and the way to keep the numbers down is they don't, re, they don't ask people, people are not required to take the test that they used to take. So that people that are infected with certain viruses are undiscovered kept secret. So before you get married, you need to get a blood test. Hello? Now, I'm, I'm just trying to help you out because, see, the reality is, you know, you ain't supposed to be having sex before you get married, right? But if you were smart, you wouldn't be having sex without no blood test either. It could cost you your life. <laughs> 